Hi everyone, today I'm going to share 10 tips for Lightroom Classic that I find useful in managing my workflow. I've been using Lightroom for a long time, but I only discovered some of these tips relatively recently. Some tips would build on previous ones, so it's best if you follow them in sequence, uh, you'll be able to see better what what's going on. And make sure to stick around until the end of the video for my favorite tip, I think, and my little bit of secret sauce for the finishing touches for an image. So let's get stuck in. Tip number one. Lightroom's panels can take up quite a bit of your screen, which is not too much of a problem if you're working with dual monitors or a large screen, but if you are working on something like this 13-inch MacBook Air, every inch of screen real estate matters. Uh, maximizing the image area can make a huge difference. So tip number one is to press Shift and Tab together on your keyboard. This fills the screen with the image and only leaves the toolbar remaining and you can cycle the toolbar on and off by pressing the T button on your keyboard. You can then bring up the develop panel by hovering over the triangle in the middle of the right edge of the screen. It will slide out automatically and you can make any adjustments you like and it will auto hide again once you move your mouse away. Uh, and if you want to keep it permanently turned on just click on the arrow and it will stay on for you. The same applies for all of the other panels as well. So if you want to access your presets, for example, you can just click the arrow on the left of the screen and so on for the ones on the top and the bottom as well. Tip number two. This is another tip for keeping everything compact on the screen. All of the panels on the right hand side of the develop module are expanded by default, which can mean a lot of scrolling to get to the section that you want. However, if you right click anywhere in the panels area, you can select solo mode. Lightroom will collapse all of the panels except for the one that you're working in just showing the headers for the others and you, as you switch between the panels Lightroom will collapse the previous one in order to open the new one so you only ever have to have one panel open at a time that's unless you want to have more than one open then clicking the shift button and selecting it will keep it open as well tip number three now that we've freed up that space here's a tip to allow you to have a little bit more precise control on the sliders you can grab the left hand edge of the develop panel and drag it out so the panel becomes wider and it makes it easier to fine tune your adjustments. Tip number four is lights out mode. If you want to view your image without the distraction of any of the panels you can just press the letter L on your keyboard and your image will be displayed against a dark grey background with just a thin white border around it. Pressing L again will make the background go black and pressing it a third time will cycle back to your original view. Tip number five. You probably already know that you can rate your images by pressing the numbers on your keyboard. One to five for star ratings and six to nine for assigning a color tag. But did you know that if you have the caps lock engaged on your keyboard, Lightroom will automatically advance to the next image so that you can continue rating. This is particularly useful if you're doing a quick cull of the images after you import them because it also works with the pick and reject options. So if you click P for pick or X for reject, Lightroom will move on to the next photo once caps lock is turned on. Tip number six. Don't be afraid to use some of the tools in the develop module for creative purposes. For example, this is the correct color balance for this image taken early one morning in Paris. It's with daylight white balance as it, as it would be. However, if I shift the white balance to a much cooler color temperature, I get this result, which I much prefer. And that right there is a good reason to always shoot in RAW, because you can't do this with a JPEG. Tip number seven. It's often a good idea to see what effect the auto button has in the develop module. It's easy to dismiss it. You don't always want your computer making decisions for you, but it's a quick way to get a good starting point for your edits. And if you're new to Lightroom, it's a great learning tool because you can try it out on different photos and start to learn how the different sliders work in combination with each other. Uh, it usually bring down the highlights and boost the whites and open up the shadows and bring down the blacks and give you improved contrast. It doesn't always work, but it's a good starting point. Okay, and on to tip number eight, which is local adjustments. Now I have a whole video devoted to this and I put a link on the end screen so that you can watch that if you like. So let's stick with this image for this, uh, this tip. Autotone has given us a nice contrast in the sky, but our background is very, very dull. So I'm going to create a linear gradient mask. And I do that by dragging upwards around the horizon because I want a sharp transition between the, the sea area and the area of the sky. Um, now, dragging the gradient tool upwards on the linear gradient 
can cause things to sway a little bit from side to side, but holding the shift key down means that it'll stay completely level with the horizon as you drag upwards. Then it's just a case of making the adjustments that I want to get the foreground brightened up, maybe by bringing exposure up by 0.5 or 0.6 stops and bringing up the whites, warming up the color a little bit, and maybe just raising the tint, getting the sort of evening colors that I want to get into the sea. And tip number nine, let's review the changes that we've made to this image. So first of all, let's maximize the image size on the screen by using shift tab, as I've already talked about. And then we go into lights out mode by pressing L on the keyboard. And now if we press Y, we can see the before and after versions of this image. Tip number 10 is to use virtual copies to play around with different versions of an image. You can have worked on an image and be quite happy with how it looks, but just want to see how it would look if you did things a little bit differently. So rather than discard all your changes, you can create a, a virtual copy by right clicking, clicking, right clicking in the develop module or in the library module and you can scroll down to where it says create virtual copy. This gives you the second version of an image where you can play around with maybe changing the white balance or the exposure or doing different local adjustments without making any changes to your original edits. And then you can come back and compare the results from the different ones and see which one you prefer better. Lightroom hasn't created any new files for this, so you're not cluttering up your hard drive. It's just showing you how the image would look with different settings. And the bonus tip is the calibration section. And I think a lot of people look at this and they don't really know what it's for. But it creates lots of different options for you. The, the, really the secret sauce that I talked about earlier is just that blue saturation slider. When you increase that, it really makes the image pop without looking oversaturated. It's a strange sort of a thing. You can also play around with the hue. So if you like that teal and orange look, drag the blue hue slider to the left and it gets you into that sort of territory without having to mess around in the color grading section. The blue hue slider is very useful for autumnal images like this one as well. It, when you slide it to the left, those kind of yellowy greens turn a lovely golden color and uh, somehow counterintuitively probably the, the blue saturation slider works really well along with this rather than the red one which this seems to be over the top. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful and if you did maybe you'll hit the subscribe button. It's kind of the feedback for me that tells me if I'm getting things right or not. So um, until the next time, take care.